Hey there, friends and followers. So we've made it back around to that time of the month again to report in with the monthly market report for the month of July. Slide on over and grab a seat as we check out the world of real estate together. So yes, as always, welcome back. So as we follow the trends month after month this year, it's interesting to notate that the sales we've experienced this last month are far less than what they were two years ago pre-pandemic. Mortgage rate rises and newly positioned home prices have surely affected the number of real estate transactions this year, and specifically this last month. Had these two factors not have been so significant, it's safe to say that numbers here in the state would still be booming. The level of interest here in the state of Florida continues to remain high, both for not only first-time home buyers, but those looking for a residence to use for vacations as well. It's safe to say that the number of transactions this year will continue to suffer as we crest through the third and final quarters of the year. On a positive note, it's likely that we've seen the worst of the mortgage rate rises and in some instances we've even seen drops in both rates and home sale prices respectively. This has allowed inventory to maintain and even grow, which is a huge relief for those looking to step out into the marketplace for the first time or come back around on missed opportunities due to relentless unhinged offer scenarios. With that being said, let's take a look at our local marketplace numbers. Looking at single family home sales for the Ocala Marion County area for the month of July, starting of course with closed sales. Closed sales we did see down just a tad, 545 closed homes versus June's 593. This of course being still a 15% decrease of what we saw in July of 2021 at 647 closed homes. Total sales volume we did see down just slightly, $194 million versus June's $200 million. Average sale price as a whole, we did see up a little bit, $357,000 average sale price versus June's $338. Median time to contract from going on the market to getting under contract, we did see rise a day yet again, coming in at 11 days in July versus 10 in June. And of course, our average list price received uh, on a given home uh, remained a constant 100% from June to July. Sliding on over to inventory, uh, pending inventory, we did see down 529 units versus June's 575. New listings, we did see down slightly as well, 732 new homes on the market versus June's 844. And active inventory, we did actually, however, see up 1,303 homes active on the market at this time versus June's 1,166. And this being, check this out, a 57% increase of the homes that we saw on the market this time, July 2021, at only 825 homes. With that being said, that MSI number, month supply of inventory, with the 5.0 being a balanced benchmark, we did see rise again as well, coming in at an even 2.0 versus June's 1.8. The proof is in the numbers. Now, I'm a firm believer of the prediction that by the time we reach the end of the year, a definite balance will be brought back to the marketplace. And if behavior like this continues as such, then that's exactly what we'll see. Let's take a look at some marketplace news brought to you, of course, by FloridaRealtors.org. First up, rent and landlord scams continue to run rampant in large cities. Picture it. You secure a rental agreement on a home that almost seems too good to be true. You make your deposits and move in only to find that weeks later you're getting a notice that the individual that you dealt with wasn't actually authorized to rent the property and you in fact are getting evicted. That's exactly what happened to an individual from Orlando earlier just this month. Now, fraudulent ads are often found on sites such as Facebook or Craigslist. However, this individual was scammed over the Zillow platform. On Zillow, any user can claim a home that has no other listed owners as theirs and adding only minimal information. These scammers then lie and wait for young people who aren't keen to the rental process or people that have either had credit problems or past evictions which make it hard for them to get accepted by a traditional landlord or rental agency to apply. Now, an Orlando area real estate attorney who represents several property management companies stated that he sees this type of fraudulent activity at least five times a month. If the issue is caught up front, it can often be resolved without any legal proceedings, but when a victim has established mail or other services in their name, the company then has to file to remove the tenants as if they were squatters. It can be rare that the scammers are caught, especially since some of these crimes involved, like mail and wire fraud, fall under federal jurisdiction. It's always best practice that people ask such questions as who they are renting from, and you can't always go on the property appraiser's website to see if that individual is actually listed as the owner. Asking to see the landlord's driver's license and paying attention to the payment arrangements in the lease for rent, such as where and how the rent will be paid, are always going to be best practice. If asked to pay the rent in gift cards or money orders, that is definitely a red flag. Up next, more buyers were recorded backing out of contracts in the month of July. 
Now, across the nation, roughly 63,000 home purchase agreements fell through in the month of July, or 16.1% of homes that went under contract that month, according to a report by Redfin. This number being up from a rate of 15% in the month of June and 12.5% year to year. An increase in backouts provides evidence of a changing market. In some cases, we see that buyers who started their search months ago may no longer qualify for a mortgage purchase at the price that they went under a contract with. Or frustrated buyers may have made an impulse decision and then regretted it as more listings have come to the market, or in some cases feel that they've gained more power after a seller has refused to negotiate requested changes. Now, out of the top 10 cities according to the report, Florida saw five cities make the list, with Deltona, Palm Bay, Orlando, Lakeland, and Jacksonville coming in at the number one spot with a 29.3% of buyers having backed out in the month of July. With homes sitting on the market longer now, buyers are realizing that they have more options and more room to negotiate. Repairs, concessions, and contingencies are all coming back, and if the sellers say no, those buyers are backing out and moving on because it's likely that they'll find that option somewhere else. Some buyers do remain skittish because they are afraid of a possible recession that could cause home prices to drop. Now, while it is true that home price growth annually has started to slow, roughly 8% today versus this time last year at about 17%, Prices are incrementally on the rise and economists do not expect them to crash anytime soon. And lastly, while the pandemic may have created the desire for outdoor spaces, a recent survey found a lessened demand for pools, solar panels, and smart home upgrades. After the release of the 2022 Home Design Report by the remodeling platform Fixer, 47 home designers were surveyed and 98% citing natural light as their client's most preferred home feature, followed by home offices and usable outdoor spaces. Home amenities such as swimming pools, solar panels, and smart home features were cited by just 18%, 20%, and 43% respectively. By creating a functional outdoor living space, you have more usable area in your property to enjoy, according to the report. This can allow you to entertain, relax, or exercise without having to go anywhere and thus increasing enjoyment in your home. The report also found that the average homeowner spends about $3,500 to transform a given spare room into a desirable work from home space. Other features preferred by homeowners include home security systems, spare rooms, and privacy features that include things like automatic blinds and fences and multi-use garages. Well, that has been the monthly market report for the month of July. Now, if you would like any further elaboration on any of the info contained within the video, drop a comment below. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in the Ocala Marion County area, then reach out to me directly. You guys know the drill. Slide on over to the page and give it a like and subscribe to stay up to date when great content like this is released. As always, thanks for tuning in and checking out the videos. We'll catch you on the next.